Hi everyone, what's up? Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we're gonna to be taking a journey on the road to brewing great espresso. Now, you're probably all familiar with this. This is a box cake. And I'm gonna be using this today to get us started on one big analogy. And that is that an espresso recipe is not all that different to the cake recipe on the back of this box, with the whole thing being the recipe, including the ingredients and the method. But sadly, unlike this box cake, often espresso recipes are not as detailed as they ought to be, in order for you to pick the box up, take it home and brew an amazing coffee. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what you wanna know for an espresso recipe. It's more often you hear a brew ratio being referred to, and this is essentially just the ingredients being listed and not the whole method. But this does allow for a quicker transfer of information. Now, for a coffee brew ratio, it refers to how much ground coffee you use to how much water you use. Or really, for espresso brewing, it's how much coffee you end up with brewed in the cup. And almost certainly you will hear, alongside this brew ratio, the length of time you're brewing for as well. Something like 20 grams of ground coffee in to 40 grams of espresso brewed out in 27 to 30 seconds. Now, how we get to consistently achieving that mark and following a brew ratio is called dialing in. And measuring these things really is the best way to be able to take a snapshot of how you're brewing your espresso and then possibly incrementally change something in order for you to be brewing better coffee. So you do wanna be dialing your espresso in by using a recipe and within that following the brew ratio and then you would go ahead and taste your coffee. And then you might need to tweak one or two things to hone in on that best flavor for you. So let's get our espresso machine and grinder on the bench so that we can look at setting these things up and starting to taste our way to better coffee. Now, whilst I'm doing all of that, if you don't mind, go ahead and smash that like button. That way we know that these are the sorts of videos that you would like to see more often. And along with that, hitting the subscribe button and clicking on the bell notifications, you won't miss any of the videos we release. Thanks very much for your support and let's jump straight back into the video. So the espresso recipe does contain many working parts, each one enough to fill another video. So I will summarize on each of those parts now and then follow up on specifics down in the comments section, as well as later on in other videos within this series. First up, we wanna get the water temperature and pressure over our espresso machine just right. Now, the water temperature is like the heat of the oven. And like an oven, some espresso machines also need time to reach that perfect temperature before you start using them, usually around 10 to 15 minutes. Now, if you can program your boiler's water temperature, done using the machine's own PID control, then you want your brew boiler to be set between 94 to 95 degrees Celsius. And usually if you can't program your espresso machine's temperature, then by default the machine will aim for this tight range, but temperature surfacing is something that you can do to get that better accuracy whilst brewing. As an example of this is to run that first lot of super hot water from the group immediately before brewing your espresso. So the temperature of the water that you're brewing with plays a big role in how your coffee tastes. And if you're brewing with darker roasted coffee, you might actually wanna drop the temperature of your espresso machine to 93 degrees Celsius. And this avoids overly bitter coffee. And if you're brewing with lighter roasts or even filter roasted coffee, then upping the temperature to 96 degrees can yield really good results. But generally, like many other things within an espresso recipe, they are set and forget standards that we won't be going back and adjusting all of the time. Like the type of water filter that you're using. Now this has an impact on the quality of the water that you're brewing with. And there's a whole other analogy there. We won't jump straight down that rabbit hole yet. But when it does come to espresso machines, having some water filtration is critical to the longevity of the espresso machine's inner workings as much as it is to that end flavor result in the cup. I like to use an external filter jug, like the peak water jug. And then this way, I can tailor the water to exactly what I'm after. Next, we have to consider the brand and type of grinder that we're using. Now, I will always recommend grinding fresh as you need it on demand over anything that's pre-ground. And you do wanna be using an espresso grinder. Now, if you're not too sure what a true espresso grinder looks like, then it's always best to ask somebody who might. What you will find with an espresso grinder is there is a reasonable investment and it is difficult to spend more cash 
on a grinder behind that of an already fairly expensive espresso machine, but a grinder that doesn't grind just that fine enough for espresso to brew espresso is like eating soup with a fork. Really, no matter how hard you try, it's just not going to work. Now in setting your grinder up for the first time, I would be searching for any information regarding the espresso brewing range for your grinder's settings, as the dials between each grinder does vary so much that it is difficult to narrow down a good initial espresso grind setting, and you don't really want to be wasting too much coffee trying to figure out that starting point. Next, let's talk about the size and the brand of the filter baskets that we're using. Now most standard by default filter baskets we get with our espresso machine and the manufacturer are anywhere between a 14 and a 16 gram basket, lacking a certain quality and capacity for really great espresso. And this is one of those first and affordable upgrades that I would be looking at getting with your espresso machine initially. Either an 18 or a 20 gram VST, Pullman or IMS basket, it won't break the bank, but does make a huge difference to the quality of the espresso you will brew. And the capacity rating to the filter basket is something you do wanna know and find out about. Now, you don't wanna be adding 20 grams of coffee to a 16 gram basket, and certainly not the reverse either. Now a typical espresso is made with using between 18 to 20 grams of coffee, so it is best to check the baskets that you have, and then make the switch to a better basket if you're not sure. So now it's on to perfecting the method for dosing and tamping prior to brewing. And you do need a lot of control here to make sure you do those same actions each time you brew a coffee, as a good consistent method makes for reliable results. So tapping the portafilter down to settle the grounds within the basket, and then tapping the side of the portafilter again, using the WDT method or a distributor to spread the grounds out evenly within the basket. And then tamping flat and evenly with the correct size tamp without excessive wrist breaking pressure are all great espresso preparation techniques. Whilst one or more of them I guess could be seen as excessive preparation, just try each one of them and see. Soon you won't notice those extra steps and you will be appreciating better coffee in the process. So now let's talk about the specific coffee that you're using, along with how you've stored it and how old it is. And this is to highlight that at the end of the day, if you are brewing with stale, old, burnt, or just a bad bag of coffee, you won't magically get great tasting espresso out of it. And this does come down to personal preferences, but I have found buying freshly roasted coffee and then storing it either in its own bag or something like the Fellow Atmos, along with brewing it within two to three weeks of it being roasted. And this has consistently got me the best tasting espressos I've ever had. Now, coffee that doesn't have a roast date or is pre-ground is likely to be stale and you are gonna find that it's not bursting with flavor and you also often have to stray away from traditional brew ratios just to get a good shot of espresso out of it and in turn, using more coffee in the process. Now, whether it is an espresso roast or not doesn't really matter because you can brew espresso using any style of roast and it will come down to that brew ratio whether it is any good or not. So finally, we get to the brew ratio. Now it does make sense why the brew ratio leads the conversation and is used more frequently when discussing espresso preparation. But all of this that I've mentioned previous to now does matter on how you will taste the coffee in comparison to your expectations or the experience someone else has had. And knowing how you might adjust these elements within the recipe might just help you uncover your great espresso. So the brew ratio is the key. And with how much coffee you place into your filter basket to how much espresso you brew out into your cup, you're controlling the strength of the espresso that you'll be brewing. And then ultimately, this espresso becomes the base of your final beverage. Whether it's a long black, a flat white, a latte, a macchiato, a piccolo, a mocha, having the best espresso will make the best drink possible. Now, where to start with your brew ratio will really depend on what size filter basket you're using. And just about every espresso roasted coffee anywhere is going to work off of a brew ratio of one to two. So you'll be getting twice as much espresso out as ground coffee you place in the filter basket. 
and this does work in most instances with the filter baskets. Say you've got a 16 gram basket, then you'll get 32 grams of espresso out. If you've got 18 grams in the basket, you'll get 36 grams out. If you've placed 20 grams in the basket, you'll get 40 grams of espresso out. You see where I'm going with this. So let's lengthen that ratio out to a one to three. And now you have three times the amount of coffee coming out as you placed in the basket. This works well for much lighter roasted coffees, but your regular run of the mill espresso roasts, with more volume of brewed coffee coming out, there's more water that you're using in the ratio. And what ends up happening is your espressos become more diluted and weaker in the process. Now let's discuss the brew ratio of a one to one, which is commonly referred to as a ristretto. These are powerful little drinks and they work fantastic in small cups of coffee. But if you are drinking anything more than a six ounce cup of coffee, then the volume of that ristretto really just isn't enough to maintain a good amount of strength within that final beverage of choice if it is larger than six ounces. So we do refer back to that brew ratio of a one to two with a minimum of 18 grams of ground coffee in the basket and brewing a minimum of 36 grams of espresso out for any drink larger than six ounces as the best way to approach making great espresso for use in standard cafe style drinks. So when we take a look at the brew time or the length of time that we're gonna be brewing our espresso for, this refers back to the cake reference earlier of the length of time that the cake will spend within the oven. For espresso brewing, if you brew your espresso too quickly, it's a visually unappealing brew, but it will most likely taste quite acidic and watery. Not very nice at all. And it could taste quite weak too in your final beverage of choice. And then if we brew an espresso and it takes ages to drop out and then reach your final target weight, it'll most likely taste burnt and bitter. Again, not something we all wanna be drinking. So a recommended time for brewing your espressos will differ on the beans that you're using. But generally, for a 40 grams of espresso brewed out, it should take anywhere from 24 to 30 seconds from the time you press that brew button. And then a few seconds does actually make a huge difference to the taste of your espresso, so best keep that in mind. Now, the way in which you manage that flow rate of the espresso that's brewing out, so we can get to our intended volume of the espresso in the right amount of time, is by managing the grind size and this is that final piece to fall into place to begin dialing your coffee in. Keep everything else consistent. Everything I've mentioned within the entire brew recipe to the brew ratio the same. And then by changing the grind size, you will change the speed at which the espresso brews out. And then you'll be able to make those necessary changes to the grind size, depending on the espresso you just brewed, to tweak that grind ever so slightly in the right direction, you will land on the numbers that point to a good espresso. But that's a lot to get your head around right now, so I will wrap it up here today and follow this up with dialing that espresso in using your grinder and to taste within the next video, so stay tuned for that one. I will just quickly add one final word here about maintaining your espresso machine to keep it nice and clean, as this will make or break the quality of your coffee without you even knowing it if you don't adhere to good cleanliness. Now you can check that video out from the content up here. And if you have any further questions on this video, throw them in the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one.